<clears throat> Good afternoon my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Wednesday the 10th of August 2022. It is 12.03pm here in Australia. I hope you're doing really well. I hope you're doing blessed. I literally just spent the last hour and a half making a uh, video for you guys and I forgot to take my headphones out of my microphone so it had no voice so that was fun so I'm going to do it again I'm gonna try and do it quicker but it's really encouraging I just want to do some Bible studies with you and um, and I've got this new little system here so it's really cool and I hope that it's a little bit easier to follow so basically <clears throat> what I've done here is I've just got the Bible verses up here the Bible chapters of Matthew 24 Mark 13 and uh, Luke 21 those three chapters are the coming to the Son of Man chapters and <clears throat> they have a lot of info and a lot of wisdom and discernment in there where we can uh, sort of as associate them with different groups of people for instance the book of Matthew is for the book of Jew for the book for the Jews the book of Mark is for the unbelievers in the world and um, and the book of Luke is for the bride and the church now the very interesting thing I want to show you here um, I can't believe I just did all of that and it didn't come out anyway so I'll just repeat everything that I just said so what I want you to know brothers and sisters is I want you to have faith and, and trust and belief in the fact that there are no left behind people left behind Christians okay and I want to reaffirm this via the scripture and I'm going to try and make it short and get straight to the point um, because it's so important brothers and sisters that you understand that when uh, Revelation 3 talks about the church of Laodicea being lukewarm and how he's going to spew them out of his mouth that is talking about the people who have rejected Jesus who have not accepted him into their heart when Jesus stood at the door and knocked it is not talking about left behind or weak Christians, so to speak. It is talking about people who have rejected Jesus Christ. Okay, and I will show you through scripture that there is no left behind Christians. <coughs> okay, because every name, every person that calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that whoever believes on the name of Jesus his son shall be saved and not perish but have eternal life that is a true full stop statement okay and we have to believe that so basically I'll just try and catch you up here um, now we'll go straight to Revelation and I'll show you and prove this to you and then we'll get back to um, Matthew Mark and Luke in a second so what I want to show you here is in Revelation 1 okay the first thing you have to notice is it says, um, where is it? Uh, Revelation 3, sorry. Revelation 3. Okay, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and he I will come into him and he and will sup with him and he with me. Okay? And that means if you open your door to Yeshua Jesus Christ and accept him into your heart. At any age, of any time in your life, you are sealed into the day of your redemption. See Ephesians chapter 4. It is scriptural, it is proven you are sealed into the day of your redemption. Now what that means is, uh, on my last video when I was talking about being sealed into the day of redemption, people um, were like, once saved, always saved, it's not biblical, it's not true, you know, you can lose your salvation, you cannot lose your salvation, unless you physically say, I don't want you in my life Jesus I don't believe in you God anymore you cannot lose your salvation brothers and sisters you'll be the greatest or the least in heaven but the operative words being you will be in heaven okay so let's have a look here to the church of Laodicea okay I know your works you're neither hot or cold I wish you were hot or cold but because you're lukewarm it's the only time it's written in the entire Bible I will spew you out of my mouth okay this is the key because you say I'm rich increase of goods and need of nothing in other words I don't need you God I don't need you Jesus I can do this all on my own that is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit thinking you can do everything on your own that every good thing comes from your own hand okay you've rejected Christ you've rejected the Spirit you've rejected the blessings of God and you're claiming them for your own 
okay this is who he's talking about here not um, you know minimal fruit Christians like people who don't do that much you can have a, a, a person who doesn't do anything but still believes brothers and sisters they will be saved it is scriptural okay and I will prove that to you that there is no lukewarm people um, or left behind people and I'll show you that in a sec but these people are, are here are the ones who have rejected the Messiah and didn't want anything to do with them. Perfect example, um, when the blood moon of May um, 16 happened, just prior to that I wrote out little like flyers and stuff saying, you know, um, you know, this blood moon's going to happen. It could be, you know, this is what the Bible was saying, you know, make sure you're right with God. And uh, there was this woman I met in, in the shops. Long story short, I felt led to God, led by God to talk to her about it. And she said, no, I don't want to hear anything about it. I don't believe in Jesus. It's those people, brothers and sisters, because we're all children of God. We're all knitted in our mother's womb, but we have a choice to either accept or reject Jesus Christ. And those will be the lukewarm people spewed out of God's mouth, not people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They may have a small mustard seed worth of faith, and even they can move mountains. Remember, brothers and sisters, it is a gift from God so that no man can boast. We have to remember that. It's not ours. I know it seems crazy and it's not fair that people who don't do anything for God in this life can get to heaven, but it is true, brothers and sisters. And I believe very much that we're going to have a chance. And um, when you have a look, um, if you know the story of Josephus, Josephus was an ancient Jewish historian, right? He would write the records down of what was happening. And um, he, he wrote down seven omens that happened prior to the destruction of uh, the Temple of Jerusalem, right? And the first thing was there was a star in the sky that from the east that just stopped and stayed over Jerusalem. The second thing was a comet that stayed over Jerusalem for a whole year. That was Comet Haley, okay? And... Um, basically you know these these things we were told over and over and over again were signs but all of the mystics and the sages and the pharisees whatever they thought these were good omens you know they thought they were um, apparently another thing that happened was a heifer was brought into the temple and it gave birth to a lamb miraculous things happened but the warnings were not heeded just like they are not heeded today <clears throat> Okay, and so that destruction of Jerusalem happened on this very day, on the 10th of August in the year 66 AD. Okay, brothers and sisters, and it is very, very amazing at the moment that um, coming up to this supermoon, the, the third and final supermoon of 2022, which is August the 12th, we're going to have the supermoon. We also have accompanying with that is the Persides meteor shower, which is the greatest meteor shower um, of the year because it comes from the comet Swift Tuttle. And Swift Tuttle is instead of the planets going around the sun like this, uh, I'm not here to discuss flat earth, whatever, but the way they draw it on their models, this comet Swift Tuttle goes like this. Okay, and it, when it comes up, it dives to, towards the sun each time. And they say that this comet was responsible for the distinction, extinction sorry, of the dinosaurs and it is, uh, it is now twice as big and four times as fast. And they, they've worried about this planet many times and they, you know, whatnot. But anyway, so that's happening. And the reason every time that comet goes past the sun, um, its tail, which is ice and stuff like that, it melts off and has a big tail, there's debris, and that hence we get the meteor showers. Okay, so, you know, we've got similar things. There's nothing new under the sun. We're going to get warnings and warnings in the skies, in the heavens. Okay, brothers and sisters? So, that is your lukewarm brothers and sisters. It's not your lukewarm partner, your spouse, your friend, okay? If they have received Jesus Christ into their life, they believe him, no matter, even if it's as small as a mustard seed, then they are for Jesus and they shall be saved. That is the condition. God did it like he said. It's a gift, a gift from God so that no man can boast. Not how many times you went to church, not how many tassels you have on your robe, you know, all this Torah and absorbent stuff. And I always say absorbent, 
observant Torah observant stuff now speaking of Torah observant you know the verse in the Bible the wedding where the guy gets in and he's not wearing a wedding garment and the and the king was like how did you get in here without a wedding garment brothers and sisters I truly believe that this is talking about those who are going back to the Torah and they're doing everything by the traditions and of you know they're making little tassels for their um, you know for their clothes and for whatnots and they're they're going back to the traditions of man okay and uh, basically I think this is what it means by that that person got into that wedding with his own garment on with his own things that he's done with his own works and God was like the king was like how did you get in here without the, the wedding garment which is the blood of Christ the blood of Christ is what seals us into the day of our redemption right um, and that's why you get chucked out because it's not about um, anything any work so that no man can boast right it's a gift from God so let's get back to this <coughs> so um, I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come to him and sup with him and he with me Okay, brothers and sisters, I stand, Jesus stands at your heart, everybody's heart on this whole world, and he's not. Can I come in? Can I come in? We either accept him or we reject him, right? And, um, you know, that's going to continue on until the very last moment. Jesus is going to always, even if that knocks become very faint on someone's door, on someone's heart, he's still going to try okay and that's our prayers and stuff for our, our people who don't believe our loved ones who don't believe at all um, that's why we're going to keep praying so so as we can see there the next thing um, you know look behold the door was open in heaven the trumpet said come up here and immediately I was in the throne I was in the spirit sorry immediately I was in the spirit and before the throne okay and then you have Okay, and then you have the seals, which I believe that's where we are now. We are at the third seal, okay, the black horse, which the first three seals, the white, the red, and the black, they are all the beginning of sorrows, brothers and sisters. When you read in Matthew and Mark, the beginning of sorrows, which is, take heed, no man deceives you. Um, uh, many will come in my name, saying I'm on Christ. That going to deceive many. Wars, rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famine, pestilence, earthquake. They're all the beginning of sorrows. We've lived through them. We're living through to the end of the beginning of sorrows. That's our tribulation, our purifying, our refining. Okay, and these match up with the three horsemen. This black one here is the scale one. It's balancing. Probation is closing, brothers and sisters. The very next one is the uh, um, the fourth beast with the uh, pale green horse whose name was Death, that's Satan, and Hell followed him. That is when you read Daniel 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and contempt. That is your dead, wicked, being raised, brothers and sisters. So you've got Satan being cast down with one third of his angels and the dead wicked also being raised and that's going to follow him. And power was given to Satan and to the dead wicked over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, death and beast of the earth. Okay, that's America. All right. Then you've got your fifth seal, souls under the altar that was slain. So the martyred saints, they have a special place under the altar of God. Whereas everybody else dead in Christ is reserved in chambers. A chamber of peace and a chamber of chaos. The book of Enoch talks about this a lot more. Okay? And they sleep in peace. Okay? But there's souls that have been martyred. They're special. Okay? They've given their life for Christ. And they are held under God's throne. And they are saying, because Satan's just been cast down. There's just been a big, violent thing happened in heaven, right? They're going, how long until you... Uh, uh, until you do not how long uh, O Lord holy and true does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth and God's saying hang on a sec here have some white robes and rest a little season until your fellow, fellow servants and brethren that should be killed as you were should be fulfilled okay now you might say oh there you go see there's your left behind no these are the people brothers and sisters that 
shall um, that shall find Jesus Christ during this trial. These are going to be a handful of people that were in Revelations. It says uh, the devil will throw some of you into prison for 10 days. Uh, be faithful unto death and you'll receive your crown. That's them, okay? <clears throat> and, um, and I beheld and the great earthquake, the sun, black, moon, blood. Uh, stars fall, okay? Then the men are running to the mountains, okay? And the great day of his wrath has come. Who can stand? Okay, so we've got that happening. So all we've had happen right now, Satan's been cast down. The sun, moon and stars do their thing. And what's the very next thing that happens? Is the four angels standing on the four corners, holding back the wind, the ceiling of the 144,000, and then this. And after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. This is us. This is all of the dead in Christ, since Abel, or since Adam, right, right until us now. Those that are, uh, uh, those that sleep in the dust, and us who are alive and remain. And remember, the wicked dead is also going to be raised. Remember, Revelation 1 7 says, Every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. Even the people who stabbed Jesus in the side on the cross will be risen for this event. It needs to be this way. Otherwise, if these people were not risen to witness the return of the Messiah, I mean, this is their concluding of their life, okay? They stabbed him, saying, um, you know, like that one centurion said. Oh, if you're the son of God, then just get yourself down, you know, off the cross. You can help others, but you can't help yourself. The mockery. This needs to happen for those people to be a witness to say, oh, my goodness. That's why they're shamed and full everlasting contempt, right? It says there's a great multitude which no man can number. That is the Abrahamic covenant. Father God said to Abraham, if you can count the stars, if you can count the dust on the earth, then that's how many children you'll have descendants. We are Abraham's descendants and we are promised all of us small and great to go to be saved Father God gave us a promise he's not going to be going back on his promise I'll tell you that okay so that's that we're all in heaven now brothers and sisters we're all in heaven okay where did these people come from they came out of the great tribulation that's what we're going through right now the great tribulation the birthing pains Every day you notice there's something else happening in the world, like more and more. Not only the wars that are going, China, Taiwan, Russia, Ukraine. We've got the earthquakes, the floods, the fires, the volcanoes. We're just about there, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> okay? Um, and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We accepted Yeshua's gift, that he will cover us in his blood. We accepted that, so we are saved. And we're going to hunger no more, thirst no more. The sunlight won't be on us or any heat. Okay, we're going through the famines. We're going through the food hikes. We're going through the testing time. This is when we're supposed to let no man take our crown and just have patience. Okay, and God's going to wipe away every tear, brothers and sisters, from every eye. So whatever trauma, uh, whatever bad thing you went through, your history, whatever, in life, it's going to be gone, forgotten, okay, forever forgotten and you're going to have eternal beautiful rest peace for the rest of your life the rest of eternity okay the very next thing so we've got the multitude in heaven okay um the very next thing is there's a silence in heaven for half an hour silence is always before judgment okay and then you've got the angel getting the prayers of incense lighting it under god's throne and throwing it down to the earth okay remember that the heavens receded like a scroll in chapter seven so the dome is now reopened again and all this stuff can start coming in and now God is avenging, avenging the souls under the altar when this gets uh, filled with the fire of the altar and cast to earth. Okay, now it is the vengeance because if you read in Luke 21, okay, after the abomination of desolation happens, it says these are the days of vengeance. So Father God is getting vengeance, not judgment yet, but vengeance for those that shed the blood of the martyred souls. Okay, so there's no, look, there's no more people getting 
you know, no more people getting saved or getting taken. There's no other rapture here. Okay, then you've got, um, you know, the fifth angel sounder. You've got the locusts, which I believe are um, drones. And their tails will sting people. Uh, that's drone darts. Just type in Obama drone darts on Google and enough said. Uh, they're going to seek men, uh, seek death and not be able to find it. That's in Joel 2. Okay, and verse 8. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Okay, it's going to be just a horrendous time, brothers and sisters. Um, okay, and then you've got... Yeah, and the rest of the men that were not killed by these plagues repented not. Okay, they don't repent. Neither re repented they of their murders. No one's repenting anymore, brothers and sisters. After the multitude rapture, okay, remember the 144,000 are sealed and protected while they're still on the earth. But they need to be the final publishing and proclamation of the Bible and then the end will come. Okay, those 144,000 have a very special job. But there is no more... Um, of God's people, brothers and sisters. No more of God's people. Jew and Gentile is now in, um, well, the, the Jew is not, they're nearly there. Okay, then you've got the mighty angel coming down, um, and this is the one that gives John the book. He eats it up, and it's bitter in his mouth and sweet as honey in his belly. And then he's given a measuring rod. He measures the temple and the people who worship in it, but he leaves out the court because the court, the uh, the wicked people down on earth will be trampling on it for 42 months, okay? That's Satan's allotted amount of time, is the 42 months, three and a half years, 1,290 days, right? Um, then there you've got the two witnesses. Um, second woe is coming. The temple of God was opened in heaven, seeing the temple of his ark. Great earthquake, great hail. <clears throat> and Revelation 12, okay, Revelation 12 is one of those books where every book in Revelation points to Revelation 12. This is like the, the climactic event, okay, this is the pale green horse, this is Satan being cast down, and, um, you know, <clears throat> And then here, after this, after Satan's been cast down, okay, so he gets cast down, we go up, or we go up, and then he comes down. Either or, it's going to be very simultaneously, okay? And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, that's Satan, which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heaven, and those that dwell in them. Okay, that's us. We, we dwell in, remember, the multitude rapture. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Remember, we are not appointed to wrath, brothers and sisters. So this proves that when the devil comes down, we are not here. We're not appointed to that. Okay, so he comes down, he's got great wrath, and we are no longer there. And it says here, the serpent casts out his mouth, water as a flood after the woman. That's the church, what we've been delivered from. Okay, the 144,000. He goes to try and attack them with a flood, which is what I think the tsunami is. Okay, and that he might cause her to be carried away by that flood. But the earth helped the woman. This is another earthquake, I believe, and opened her mouth and swallowed the flood up, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Okay, now the dragon was wroth with the church. The woman, the 144,000, went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keeps the commandment of God and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is Messianic Jews. They keep the commandments of God. They go via the Old Testament and have the testimony of Jesus. They believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Okay. <clears throat> 13, and then you've got the beast. He's coming out of the sea. Okay. Um, and then, uh, then you've got beast one, beast two, all right, which is like the beast and the false prophet. False prophets definitely got to be chumpy. Okay. Definitely got to be chumpy because he's got a whole, he's got a whole religion 
on, on his own you know people love him and worship him so um, it basically talks about the beast look this and it talks about just the absolute delusion of men okay there's men that are left on the earth because it's just you know it's absolutely horrendous and it gives uh, power to the life onto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should speak okay this is definitely AI okay an image I always thought it was a mobile phone something to do with a photo because we call photos images right and uh, the fact that he's making the image speak okay means that it's AI it's some kind of computer based thing okay and he causes all to receive the mark in their right hand to the forehead no man might buy or sell and um, that is a whole thing on itself I can't talk about that because I get banned every single time I do but what I will say to you is I want you to type into Google there's many people like is that the mark is you know the jibby jabby the snake bite the mark is it is it not is it a precursor is it the real thing I'm, I'm back and forth with that all the time brothers and sisters and it's really hard because the majority of my family have had it um, you know my dad my two sisters their families have had it um, so you know it's a hard it's a hard slog and I want it to be the mark you know what I'm saying but what I want you guys to do on your own merit and your own research is just type in 144,000 gene sequence okay and apparently our DNA you know how the DNA the helix double helix structure it's got 72,000 genes on each side <clears throat> no and apparently this snake bite adds another strand onto it another 72,000 and that's where there's a, a really cool guy at the moment who's typed in the the mark the number of the beast is 2016 216,000 which is 72 times 3 because we've got the extra DNA helix strand now the people who've had the mark right and that is possible for what the wedding garment is as well is that that's how we're sealed because we haven't touched the image of God our DNA is our book of life 100% it's it holds everything who we are what we've done from the moment we first was conceived to the moment we take our last breath it is our book of life and um, yes there may be a real literal book in heaven but uh, it's like I'll explain it this way in the days of the Passover they put blood on the lamppost right so now we're covered with the blood on our lampposts our temples um, but we are the image of God we were created in the image of God and that is what the enemy wanted to do he wanted to sit into the temple of God and what is the temple of God here we are the temple brothers and sisters he the enemy has now been able to penetrate the temple of God and sit as God okay it's very spiritual and I think this is my biggest concern is that um, they've altered their DNA and I know you're going to read countless of government articles saying no it doesn't that's not true it hasn't altered the DNA but that's garbage it has okay it penetrates the nucleus and goes into the DNA it's called a messenger it puts a message on your DNA okay and um, yeah basically you know have, has have that have these people been manipulated into another image okay because remember we know the image the name and the number or the mark, the number and the name of the beast. There's three things. So it could possibly have been the number or the name. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know, but just research that yourself. 144,000 gene sequence. And then type in on YouTube uh, the mark of the beast or the number of the beast is 216,000 to find that person that I'm talking about. Um, he did a really great video showing scientifically how our DNA works and whatnot so that could be very well what the wedding garment is and that's why he's the king said how did you get in here without a wedding garment you know what I mean I don't know it's just something I thought I'd throw out there but my point to you in all of this study here is that brothers and sisters no one has been left behind anybody who believes in the name of the Lord shall be delivered 
Anybody who believes in Yeshua Jesus Christ as the Son of the living God, died for us, was resurrected again and ascended to heaven, and is going to come back and get us again in the clouds, um, shall be saved and not perish and have eternal life. It's as simple as that. Go through Revelation yourself. Don't take my word for it, but you will know it, you know, the people, it's, they repent not, they repent not, they repent not. After the multitude rapture, that's it, brothers and sisters. There's one chance and one chance only to believe and receive on this gift. Okay? Those who are looking for Jesus, he will appear a second time. Hebrews 9.28. So, I <clears throat> just want to show you something in Matthew 2. We have here... Um, Where is it? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light, the stars fall from heaven. The tribulation of those days, brothers and sisters, are the ones we're living through right now, okay? Because remember, this goes along with Revelation 6, the seal 6. The sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light, okay? That's going to, um, you know, and be turned to blood and the stars fall from heaven. Okay, this is exactly where we are now. We are in the tribulation of those days. Okay, so immediately after, like any moment now, any moment now, okay, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give us light, the moon will turn to blood and the stars will fall from heaven. Satan will be cast down and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, which is the rapture. This sign of the Son of Man in heaven is not in Mark or in Luke. It is only in Matthew, and it's for the Jews to make um, to make the Jews jealous because they think they're the only ones that have deliverance, and they're God's special people, and um, you know, and they're going to be jealous. Okay, they're going to be jealous of this redemption. They're going to be jealous that they're going to be angry that you know they've been lied to, and that Jesus really is the Messiah. Oh, there's a whole heap of stuff. Okay. Um, and then see the very next thing I told you the 144,000 get sealed the angels the angels are holding back the winds remember and then it said the multitude rapture happens so this all here is all going to happen very quickly okay we're going to have Satan come down we're going to have the angels holding back the wind we're going to have the sign of the son of man in heaven which is the rapture the multitude rapture which no man can number Okay, and like like we go here in the days of Noah. Okay, the people are going to be eating and drinking and giving in marriage. It's a it's a normal day, brothers and sisters. We're not going to go through the great tribulation and be running for our lives, whatever. No one's going to be eating, drinking, and giving in marriage when we're running through our for our lives. Okay, this is going to happen on a normal day, just like it says right here. Then two shall be in the field, one will be taken, the other one left. Two women at the meal. See, so these people in the field working, okay? No one's going to be doing this in the time of great wrath and tribulation. Great, great tribulation, okay? And it says, if the good man had known what time the thief was going to come, he would have watched. So in other words, watch. <laughs> okay? So, that's that. Now we go to Mark. Okay? Um, okay, so in Matthew also too, we've got... The abomination of desolation. Okay, where are we? And when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel stand in the holy place in Mark, it says when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel standing where it ought not, then let them flee to Judea. But in Luke, we don't get that. We get when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then you know that that desolation is nigh. Okay, this is a pre-warning. After this, we're out of here, brothers and sisters. After this, after we see the armies surrounding Jerusalem, we are out. Okay, because it says, and then let them. Okay, notice from verse 8 to verse 20, it's you, your, ye. Okay, and then it says them, they, from 21 onwards. Okay, they have to flee to uh, Judea. <clears throat> for these are the days of vengeance, brothers and sisters. That proves it. Okay. These are the days of vengeance. That all things, and woe to them with child, 
for there be great distress in the land and wrath. Okay, so here's it's proven. As soon as the abomination and desolation happens, which can't happen until we're out of here, it's going to be wrath. So we're not appointed. We have to be out of here by then. Okay, then we've got the signs, and there shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Okay, we don't get the moon, you know, the sun turning black, the moon turning the blood. We just get the, these signs in them. Okay, because we're probably going to be out of here before that event in seal six happens, before the moon turns to blood and all that. Oh no, we're not, because that happens first. Yes, that happens first. The moon turns to blood, the sun's black, and the stars fall. That happens first. Then the um, the ceiling of the 144,000, then the angels holding back the wind, and then the multitude rapture. So all very quick though, all very quick succession. So I love this verse in Luke, and when these things begin, 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 begin to happen, then look up. Lift your heads up for your redemption doors near. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is at hand. So that's, that's awesome, okay? And my one of my favorite things too. But there shall not a hair on your head perish, in your patience possesses ye you your souls. Okay, so again with the promises, not a hair on our head is perished. We're not going through getting our heads cut off and running for our lives, whatever. The only thing we, we have to go through is the famine, the earthquakes, the pestilence. We've gone through them, but we're saved from all of them. You know, we're saved from all of them if we trust. And we didn't rush out and go get the jibby-jabby because we thought, because as Yeshua says, anyone who tries to save their life will lose it. So, you know, there's so many things, brothers and sisters, that I don't know. We've just got to rely on the mercy and love of God to, you know, but it's his will. And I can understand why he's sorting out the wheat and tares at the moment, because I wouldn't want people that weren't, you know, didn't really believe in me either. In, in heaven it's just why would you want that for eternity and speaking of heaven brothers and sisters I know I've mentioned this in many of my videos but just in case someone's new again excuse the helicopter um, basically you know how it says that um, heaven and earth shall pass away right heaven and earth shall pass away so remember when Yeshua ascended he said I go to prepare places for you so that where I am you can be as well so if heaven and earth are going to pass away those places he prepared for us are for one reason only and that is for the rapture that is to hold us and keep us safe protect us in his chambers and while father God you know has his indignation on this earth because heaven and earth are going to pass away and then you know the new Jerusalem which is in heaven already is going to come down and sit and settle on this beautiful brand new earth when God makes it brand new again and then we're going to live for eternity on this earth like we are now but just in perfection and in joy and love and in, in incomprehensible joy you know everything will be limitless it's, oh, it's going to be wonderful so um, I just wanted to give, bring that little study across to you brothers and sisters, the difference between Matthew, Mark and Luke are just beautiful and especially if you want a real um, you know, encouragement, read the book of uh, Luke 21. You will see that it's uh, the vengeance, the wrath and all that is not for us. We're just going to have patience and not let no man take our crown, okay? And that, again, I want to reconfirm that there is no left behind Christians, okay? Left behind is a uh, predicted programming device of the enemy, and that's why he made so many movies. And that's why he can make blockbuster movies like the ones with Nicolas Cage in it and, uh, and make money because that's how he wins with Christians, is putting fear onto them, making them think they're not worthy. But we we are instructed to pray that we are found worthy to escape all these things that are coming upon the earth okay and um, to be able to stand before the Son of God and right then it says um, you know if we're gonna here down here um, watch watch ye there and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man 
or to stand before the Son of Man, that is happening in um, Revelation 6. Okay? For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So this, it, you see, if you parallel these things, and you can see that, you know, all the beginning of sorrows match the three, uh, first three horsemen. Okay, the pale green horse matches the war in heaven. It's just beautiful. And this is when it's going to go down, when it's going to turn from being free and being able to accept being covered in Yeshua's blood and saved to all of a sudden, this why these people are running to these mountains and asking the rocks to fall on them and kill them because they, they know it's coming. They know it's too late now. Formation is closed. It's done. But I just wanted to bring this message across to you with everything that's going on in the world. I don't know if I've talked about it because, like I said, I did this video before and I don't know if I'm going to re-mention it again now. But the 10th of August is also the very day that the destruction happened in Jerusalem. Okay, brothers and sisters, so it's the 9th of Av <coughs> today here in Australia. It's 12.44pm uh, here now. So... Um, you know we are we are at the precipice, okay, of this um, this final events, these final moments before we see, um, you know, this part, this pale green horse in action. And you know this is going to happen exactly when it says you know the moon's going to turn to blood the sun will be black and the stars will fall from sky and the powers of heaven will be shaken this is the powers of heaven satan <clears throat> and his principalities of the air they're going to be cast down to this earth and gathered with the rulers and uh people of this earth to battle in the day of the lord as zechariah 14 states so um you know, this is awesome, babe. <laughs> babe, sorry, talking to my partner. Um, brothers and sisters, this is really, really, really fantastic news that uh, we are saved into the day of redemption, okay? Um, you know, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and the remnant who shall the Lord shall call. Okay, everybody who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is absolutely beautiful, brothers and sisters. And um, like I was saying before, with the um, you know, the comet, comet Swift Tuttle on, no, sorry, the comet that was over Jerusalem in sixty six, um, A.D. Um, oh, what was I going to say about that? Oh, I don't know, I can't remember what I was going to say, but um, basically we've got a lot of stuff that's going on at the moment in the skies, in the heavens, and we've got to ta be ta paying attention to it because it is our last and final sign, okay, and remember um, Daniel 9, the seven things that we need to get done, you know, and bring an end to sin, an end to iniqu iniquity, reconciliation of iniquity, um, you know, everlasting righteousness. And the last thing was to anoint the Most High. That's literally what we're doing. That's literally what we're looking for, brothers and sisters, is the coronation of the King, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. We are truly crowning him as our King. And that is why, you know, he's going to come back with power and great glory. We go up to him in the skies, meet him in the air, and out of there. And then when we come back, he's going to have power and great glory. And we're going to ride with him on those white horses. And we're going to see and witness the destruction, the final destruction of the, of the wicked through the breath and fire of Yeshua's mouth. The word of truth. Okay, so, brothers and sisters, I'm going to leave it there with you. Um, yeah, just... Just know that um, these moments where it's literally like, um, you know, the world is on a, a stage at the moment where it could literally, someone could press a button and it could all just go down, you know what I mean? But Father God gave us a promise in his word that he's going to come back to destroy the people who are destroying the earth. Before man can destroy the earth, that's God's job. He created it, he destroys it. Before men can do that, he's going to come back. So he's come back pretty soon.
brothers and sisters because this isn't going to go on for too much longer the peace the so-called peace on this earth before all of hell breaks out literally on this earth so um i just wanted to give you that encouragement and the a, a bible and scriptural study to show you that um indeed there is no left behind christians i think it's a big lie from the devil and um yes a person can backslide but you are always sealed into the day of your redemption why do you think it says you know faith this is the smallest mustard seed can move mountains and why does it say the least and the greatest in heaven you know like we joked about once before in my other videos i don't care if i'm the janitor in heaven i don't care if i'm at the back right hand corner right at the end as long as i'm in heaven and that's the key it's literally that's as, as simple as it is brothers and sisters believe on his son that's all god wants you to do he did away with all that other crap because it it made men want to follow tradition and speak honor father god with their lips but their heart was far from him so he got rid of that and his son paid and did away with it all and paid for it all and all god wants us to do is believe in his son and we will be saved so um with that being said brothers and sisters um i hope this study has blessed you and you can see that um through the scriptures it's pre-trib you know it's a pre-rapture let's call it pre uh, pre-wrath rapture let's call it that pre-wrath rapture because it's not pre-trib because we are in trip we're in the great tribulation right now the great travailing of the woman about to give birth we're in the great tribulation our refining our purifying but we are not appointed to go into the wrath you know for the great day of his wrath like it says here for the great day of his wrath is come so this happens as soon as the, the the moon goes to blood, the sun's black, stars fall from the sky. Okay, and as soon as the, the great day of his wrath has come, brothers and sisters, it shows you it's a day of vengeance, a wrath upon his people. It's wrath then, as soon as the moon and sun stars do their thing. And the very next thing, angels holding up the wind, 144,000 get sealed, multitude rapture happens. So have no faith, have no faith. Yeshua's not going to beat up his bride before he marries her. Come on, let's let's give some glory to Yeshua and to his Father, okay? They've got a great plan for us. Believe it and receive it. So I love you very much. I hope Father God blesses you with more research and more study. Just, um, yeah, have faith and be encouraged that these things are there to show you and to comfort you in these times. What feel like tarrying, what feel like forever, but... Um, you know that our page through our patience we get good uh, experience points as a gamer would say so um, just be patient on him because he's rounding up all of his last people at the moment that need to be saved uh, I love you my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua and if I do not see you in my next video I will definitely see you in the skies for that wedding feast bye God bless